another episode of With the Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. You should know better than that now, dog. I know. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode with the Chiefs. Uh, today we're joined by two-time guest appearance, uh, Mr. Joe Dorf, race director of uh, Buffalo Stampede and a number of other single track events. Uh, today the focus is on Buffalo Stampede again. I think last time we had Joe on, we were previewing the race and then this time we we're going to be running through the recap. Um, I think it looked like a pretty epic weekend down there with a few uh, exciting kind of tales and stories to tell. So uh, strap in for big episode with Joe. Um, but let's get caught up first of all. Uh, Joe, how's your, your running been? How have you been? Hey, uh, good to be back. Um, yeah, uh, it's been good. Um, obviously, that week of the Stampede was a bit um, of down week for me, just like being busy. But um, I also I think I was a bit sick, had a bit of a cold on like the early in the week as well, which was probably good timing because I wasn't going to be running anyways. So, um, yeah, apart from that, um, oh, and I had another sick week a couple of weeks before that because um, my son sort of started daycare this year, so I keep getting sick. But um, apart from that, those two weeks, yeah, the last 10 weeks have been pretty good building, just like building up volume, yeah um i don't know yeah i've got western states coming up in well 10 uh, we just said 10 weeks so um yeah pretty exciting got 10 weeks left to train and i've sort of planned it out pretty well so i'll be hitting my peak mileage basically like this coming week will be like hopefully my first like week at sort of 150k or something so um try and do I'm planning on doing like maybe six of them uh, with, with a down week in there as well. Um, and then, yeah, figuring it all out logistically around the race as well because we've got a bit of a holiday plan. So, yeah, planning it all out closer to the race as well, which is exciting. But, um, yeah, this, yeah, it's been going good last couple of weeks. been building up. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to talk about my training week as well? or uh, could, Yeah, sure. Yeah, Takes yeah. Away. Like, are we going to do that? Like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, obviously I have a big listener, guys. Listen to every episode. So, nah, I was just joking. But, like, <laughs> yeah, I do know that you, you talk about the training week at the start of every episode. Um, I can take it from here if you want. I can just be the host. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so I, I know I've been taking my son, my rest days on Sunday, actually. So um, today I didn't do anything at all, which was nice. Um, I I don't know if you guys have a day off a week or not, but um, I like to have one day off a week, um, which just, yeah, Sunday works well for me because I work Monday to Friday and then long run Saturday and then my wife works on Sunday as well. So it's a good day just to look after my son uh, and just chill as much as I can basically. And yeah, I really like having Sundays just super relaxing. So that's been nice. Um, but yeah, last Monday, I kind of do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or all, all kind of pretty similar. They're just kind of easy days. Um, yeah, just like depending on how I feel, it'll just be zone one, zone two sort of thing. Um, trying to run a bit more flat than I used to. So I've been probably doing about, like about 3,000 meters a week, which is still a lot, but not as much as I probably would normally be doing it, like the same sort of distance volume, I guess. So um, that's been a change and it's been nice. So I've just been doing a bit more like rolling hills and just flat road, um, like bike path stuff, which is makes it a lot easier to get case to be honest. <laughs> Then running up and down mountains like I'm not like normally doing. Um, so so yeah, that's been good. Feeling really actually quite good already. So that's that's nice. Um, but yeah, I do strides generally Monday. Uh, sorry, Tuesday and 
Friday with with a little bit of strength, but not not too much. Just like basically activation sort of stuff. Um, uh, and then on on yeah Monday and Thursday, I sort of it's just like just like an easy run, like ninety minutes um, to two hours sort of thing, with not much else going on in the day. Just like trying to keep it like an easy day. Um, and then I do, I generally do a workout Wednesday. So, um, yeah, Wednesday is, I don't have a coach or anything, so I kind of just make it up and it's a bit like what I want to do, to be honest, which is, um, yeah, not super structured, but, uh, I normally try and keep my intervals like less than four minutes. Cause I think that that's, I think as an ultra runner, you don't need to do like complicated, like four to seven minute stuff because you're not like trying to train out that specific like end of a marathon or you know that specific like trying to clear lactate at a, at a high pace or anything like that it's it's not like a fight it's not like that marathon or under kind of training program where you're doing speed for a really specific reason but ultra running i think it's just more like you're doing it because it's good for you and it's good for your running economy so um, and power. So yeah, the workouts would just generally be something pretty simple. Like a couple of weeks ago I did like, a uh, yeah, five by one K. Um, and then I did like a 10 by one minute, a couple of weeks, or like a week after that. And then, yeah, like last, uh, so yeah, last week I just did, I wanted to run up mystic. So I just did a mystic threshold, which is like, it's like 18 minutes and a bit. Um, and then I just finished that with like three by, uh, no, sorry, four by three minute hills. So, um, yeah, just kind of make it up as I go. But yeah, I, I keep it pretty simple to work out. Um, and then I try, try and double that day as well, just to get it, make it like a really hard day. So not just do a workout, but also have more volume on that day as well. Um, sort of trying to keep my hard days hard and my easy days easy and then the intervals how will you normally pace those will you think about uh, yeah the yeah. ones on last week were like the four minutes for example yeah those that was pretty cruisy like okay. uh, i i don't like to race my workouts very much i i just try and keep them like running smooth running strong sort of thing um if I was only doing like three by sorry five by three minutes or something like that and no threshold before it, I'd probably go a bit harder. But those ones, I I probably went a bit too hard on the threshold, and so it was kind of more relaxed. It was only, I think I was only getting up to like on my last rep. I think I only got up to like one hundred and seventy beats or something. Like it wasn't like a high, super high effort or anything. Um, but I still felt strong running, and that was the point of it. Um, and then I also like to kind of do a little bit of a tempo home as well, like from the reps. So like, it's almost like finishing my workout days, like with a little bit of a warm down, a warm down right at the end, but like until that trying to keep just good turnover the whole, the whole run essentially. Um, and then yeah, Saturday is my long run. So yeah, um, kind of changed plans last minute because I, I thought I, I think I might be getting a little bit run down because Henry's been sick all week, my son, and my wife's been sick as well. And I was like a bit nervous about yesterday's long run being too hard because I think like if it's too hard, you probably get sick. So I kind of dialed it back a little bit, but I feel fine today. So I don't know, probably probably good thing that I didn't go too hard. But yeah, I just did like thirty six k, uh, like a loop around Bright. Um, yeah, which was yeah, I've kind of done it before. It's a good, good loop with like a, it's like a climb at the start and then like really undulating along the ridge line and then like a basically a really long downhill and flat finish. So, um, yeah, my long runs I've sort of been trying to, um, just pick some part of the run to push a little bit harder on um so that could be and, and not not super hard but more like 
how do I would just probably like almost describe it as like 100k race pace or something like not hard but like you're not just like cruising you're like trying to at least push a little bit and if it's at the end of a long of the long run you can still get your heart rate up quite good without pushing too hard so it's like kind of low risk because you're not mechanically putting any stress on your body but because of like just heart rate drift throughout the long run um you can actually get a good tempo sort of effort in without you know pushing crazy hard and so yeah yesterday i didn't really do it hard yesterday but just on the flat coming home i was just trying to keep running reasonably okay um but in other in other long runs i think i'll push like quite hard for like an hour or two um especially closer to the race just to get ready to run fast you know for like on tired legs sort of thing yeah um but that was basically my week so yeah i don't know I'd, I'd th i've been doing like i've been building up from like 90k for the last for the last 10 weeks essentially from like 90k to like now i'm at like 140 last week so or this week um so yeah i'll just try and keep it high now for the next like six to seven weeks and then um taper in a bit but yeah um just pretty easy to train though when you got a race race like western states coming up because it's pretty motivating yeah yeah Helps what about um the you got like a schedule of different long runs you're planning on doing leading up or um yeah i've actually got a pretty good idea because i'm gonna do two like shorter races um but i'm gonna use them as long runs so like next weekend's my first one actually which will be just the bright fun run which is like a school fundraiser um and that's 18k race so it's not long but i'll do like a probably like a, almost like a 15k warm-up or something but like easy and then and just with like you know really cushion shoes and just try and keep it easy and then do some strides and then um race pretty hard but you know trying not to injure myself or anything um <laughs> and then in the arva i'll probably do like a double like an easy double just trying to get like still a good volume in the day but without you know with a race as well and i'll do that one other time i got I'm gonna do the beach worth uh i can't even remember what it's called it's like a new race beer run the beer run <laughs> uh it's a new race happening in beach worth in a few weeks so that'll be fun um and that's 28k so i'll do a similar thing but i won't have to do as long of a warm-up or anything to get good volume because it's still pretty long um and then i've probably only got like two other long runs around bright because um i got a, a grampian gpt camp um in the end of may which is one of our the gpt 100s in november one of our races but we do a camp in may so that's the weekend after uta um and that will naturally be a long run for me because, like, yeah, we it's like a four day camp, and I'll try and double um, the first two days, and then the last day, the third day is kind of a long run anyway. So that's just naturally good training. And then, um, yeah, so that's almost like Australia because I'm going to the US on the thirtieth of May. So. Um, yeah, I've kind of got it planned out, but essentially that's like I've got like a month there um, before the race. So I am going to do like a four-day block on the course, which will be like trying to run the whole course in four days. So like that's going to be my main training stimulus for the whole block. Um, so I don't want to go too crazy until then. Um, but yeah, so Australia is just about getting real, just really fit and then america like will be more specific which is good because i'll be there long enough to get a little bit of heat and altitude in before the race so i think it'll work out good um yeah and then see how we go but yeah pretty excited pretty pretty fun yeah that's awesome um is, do you know how much elevation gains in western states yeah it's like five and a bit so oh, really? it's actually pretty well it's not heaps like um and i think a lot of it well the first climb the first 5k has a thousand like a thousand meters essentially mm. uh, 
So you basically do like a VK and then it might be more like six or seven K. But uh after that, you know, after the five K of the race, you got like four thousand meters of climbing over like 155K or something. So okay. not like from there, like that's like less than UTA, you know, mm. with extra five K. Um so yeah, it's definitely not heaps. Um there's more downhill. I think it, you know, you run you finish at like sea level in Auburn essentially, but you the race the first fifty K average is two and a half thousand meters. So it's actually higher. Well, for us it's a high altitude race for the first fifty K. Um and you know, America like people who live in Colorado and Arizona and that wouldn't notice it, but um and that's why people don't really mention it. But yeah, I think people who go there often say it's, you know, you got to be ready for the altitude. Um, because then when you finally drop down, it gets really hot. So it's mm-hmm. like trading one one hard thing for the other hard thing. Um, yeah, so it's quite a, it's actually, yeah, it sounds like a really hard race. Um, just in like, like the really specifics of it, like on paper, I guess the stats aren't that crazy, but the specifics of it are actually pretty scary like you know high altitude drop down into the canyons and then you gotta it's gonna get really really hot and the middle section of the race is the real like steep up and down through the canyons and then and then the last i think it's 60k is like super runnable but you've been pretty and it's super hot and so you're pretty wrecked from the canyons and the altitude and then you got to try and run hard for the last 60k so i just think it's a hard race um tactically to get right um but yeah i mean it'll be fun it's just like cool trying to figure out all your gear and all your nutrition and all that stuff but um yeah i've got heaps of there's so much stuff out there to study it so many articles and friends and stuff who've done it so it'll be good but uh yeah in terms of climbing it's not insane there's like seven thousand meters of downhill so that's probably the main thing. Yeah. Mm. And um, uh, what else? Uh, I think, uh, have you spent much time at altitude before? Like, have you done many camps? Uh, not really. I'm not great. Uh, I mean, I did UTMB a couple of times, but it's not super high. Like the high point of UTMB is like the average altitude of the first 50K Western States. So, um, yeah, no, I've, I've very rarely been above, like 2000 meters pretty much in my life like so yeah i I don't know how i'll go but we'll see i i actually felt it a bit utmb last year like i was i could definitely tell i was running it out like above 2000 meters which you probably shouldn't be feeling that um at utmb it's not like a high mountain race or anything so um, but yeah, I didn't do any, uh, I'll be getting more acclimatization this year, which is good because I'll probably spend a bit of time in like the Eastern Sierras and, um, like, uh, there's a few high, like we're going to put on the road trip, we'll go through a few quite high up regions and stuff. So that'd be good. Yeah. What are you, are you going to try anything different for nutrition? Are you going to, um, yeah, UTMB. It's a different race. Yeah, it's. A, I'm going to have different nutrition for sure. Uh, the, I don't think you could do the same plan for both. I mean, you probably could, but UTMB, you probably got to eat more. It's not. It's a lot cooler, so you can, um, like, eat more solid food, I mean, okay. like, or bars and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, Western States, I'm just going to try and do it all, basically, like, gels and liquid fueling. Yeah. Um, because it's probably just short enough to, to do most of it on that. Um, and it's also really hot, so it's going to be really hard to eat food, like actual food. Um, yeah, so I think I'm pro- I've got a, I've got a pretty good idea. I've got this new race um, fuel that I've been using, which I love, um, by Pure Sports Nutrition. And it's just like um, no flavor or anything. It's got the cluster dextrin in it, which I don't know if you guys know or not, but it's like a... Fancy sugar that probably costs a lot to make because very few people use it. And when they do, it's expensive to buy. Um, I've used it with one other product from True, actually. True Protein had a sports drink that uses that same sugar in it. And it was good. And I was like, this is great. Um, And then 
yeah, Pure has brought this one out, which is basically like super high carb based off that stuff and a bit of fructose. So uh, I've been loving it and it goes down so good and it's not sweet. So I don't know what it is, but obviously this sugar use, it uses doesn't have like sweetness because you drink it and it's got like 90 grams of carbs in 500 mil and it's just tastes a bit salty and it's like weird. Right. Um, it's It's got like a weird, like a thick weird kind of texture which is not great at first but i've had enough of it now that i kind of just get it down really easy so that makes it easy because i can basically just have one of them an hour and then a gel like a caffeinated gel every couple hours and that's like my theoretical game plan um which yeah i'll probably carry like a bar a sports bar or a cookie or something as well just in case because i think yeah sometimes you get hungry even when you're having heaps of carbs if you have an actual mouthful of food in like four hours you get a bit hungry um probably carry something like that as a backup and then i'm sure i'll have stuff from the aid stations and have to problem solve and all that eventually but see how far i get anyways yeah awesome um, mm. um and i guess yeah having like a young kid how's the sleep been Oh, it's good at the moment. Yeah, he's at a good age now. Like, he's like 21, 22 months old. So, yeah, sleeping pretty good. I think it's a decent stage where they generally, most babies would be over their bad sleeping of like the first year and then probably not old enough yet to have nightmares and all that. So, um, yeah, I reckon it's probably we've got a good year of good sleeping um which we're probably in the middle of it now um yeah so not too bad yeah and he's he's he gets sick every now and then which is annoying but he has been reasonably healthy for the last month until this this week so but i'm hoping he's almost over it because he started daycare in january and i feel like that when he first starts going he gets sick a lot which is probably like the first four months and then he'll probably start to get pretty accustomed to it now so yeah hopefully i'm we're sort of through it and it'd be nice if he didn't get too sick between now and then but it'll be good travel traveling around because um the f- month before the race we're probably not going to be too in contact with like other babies and other people so it might actually be good for him like for sickness wise hopefully we sleep all, all right but we'll see <laughs> yeah yeah, that's like another kind of, I don't know, um, problem to kind of factor in yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how the sleep will work out, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And that's why I'm not like, I don't, I almost don't want to throw everything on the race for the holiday. Like we could just like go over, spend the whole time on course, stay somewhere higher, get some heat, like get some heat training in with the sauna and all that and be right like really scientific about it all but then you know i could just have a bad day or i could just like get sick or whatever and we just wasted like a month of u.s time so now we'll definitely drive around and do a proper road trip and see a lot of stuff so yeah not gonna waste it or anything yeah sounds like where you where you where you want to go where you uh, i mean we're gonna we'll fly in and out of san fran the start the finish of western states is only like it's only like an hour or something like that to the to san francisco so it's pretty accessible um yeah so we will we'll do a big loop of california essentially yeah go up north see all the redwood national forest and then go west and check out the volcanic areas like the lassen volcanic national park and then down through a couple other state forests and then that'll get us back to the world's tahoe but we'll keep going um and then check out like Yosemite and then more of the um like Eastern Sierra area because I reckon that looks sick like it's kind of like desert on one side and then like, you got Death Valley on one side and then you got not that far from Death Valley like the high mountains of you know like the Eastern Sierra like as you know like that's the whole point of Bad Water one three five like they run from the lowest point of America in death valley to mount whitney portal and mount whitney is the highest point in america so and they do it in one run 
Yeah. Um, so it's cool because you got like a big, massive desert with enormous mountains on one side. Um, so yeah, I just think that sounds cool. So we'll check all that out. And there's a lot of hot springs as well. So that'd be good. Heat training, jumping in the hot springs. I'd probably do a bunch of hot spring research before we go, I reckon. Yeah, geez, it's like plenty to kind of dig mm. into. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, what about um you, Smitty? How's uh your training, training. going? Uh it's been yeah, it's been it's been a good week. I think last week can't remember where I got up to when we yeah, had some uh ran into a little bit of issues with my hamstring. So I was kind of managing it last week. I made a decision to like bring down the mileage quite a quite a lot. But then um yeah, so I didn't do a session from last Friday. I didn't do a session uh on the Tuesday either. And I went to Target sort of the Friday. But yeah, so the beginning of the week, um I didn't I just took that day completely off. I was kind of feeling don't know. I just felt like really low energy. I, 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 and I was like, I might as well just take, might as well just take the day off and get back into it. Um, the next day. So I still made it out to Gore Hill Oval. Um, just jogging around the oval, caught up with, uh, Matt Ho as well. Um, just running around and we went out and did a bit of a loop. Um, uh, at that point, cause I think that was probably, uh almost a week since the last session so that was well into the deload so it was actually hamstring actually started to feel quite good so when i saw everyone warming up i was almost <laughs> tempted to jump in and do the session but um yeah glad glad i glad i didn't um the next day did a shorter mlr it was meant to be 60 minutes ended up being 75 um but felt felt, felt okay for that then I did easy 60 the next the next day. Uh I don't know. I was kind of at that point I was kind of paranoid about D like thinking I was even detraining, but it was it had only been like a week. I think it was definitely more head noise than possibility of losing any fitness. But um I was definitely very, very keen to get back to doing a session. Um, even just taking the week. Cause I was kind of in no, like somewhat in no man's land. Um, so to get back to the Friday and actually do the session, I was very happy about it and it went, went very well. So I did six, six by one K off 90 seconds. Um, and the, yeah, the paces were quite solid and just, um, got to the end of that and didn't have any issues. So, um, yeah, that was very positive. Definitely enjoyed that session. Um, um. What, what were the splits? Splits were um, 310, 09, 09, 07, 04, and 258. The 258 was inspired by you, Dom, <laughs> by your session <laughs> on the um, – when was it? You did yours on the oh, I think it's Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I just – I really – I mean, I was really going – kind of all out probably a little bit faster than I should have on that last one but it was just to just to test things out um it was only six and off 90 seconds which is pretty generous but definitely I kind of even felt tapered for that session definitely definitely didn't lose any fitness so I was very very happy at the end of it um and then yeah Saturday was meant to be easy 60 minutes but Dom and I showed up to Rose Park Run uh we had we had one of the other guys who's just joined Delta, Nick, race a 5K just to see where he's at. I was meant to just like be there for moral support, but of course, once the once the um once the gun went off, ended up pacing. So, uh, along with you, Dom, how do you find the how do you find the pacing? Um, yeah, it was alright. It was good. Uh, like without the super shoes, and um, I ran the night before, so I was feeling a bit kind of tired and stringy, but um. It was still still good. It was great performance from Nick. Um, yep. Yeah, I think he ran like a minute PB. Yeah, uh, Matt, he ran a massive, massive PB. Yeah, but I think it sounds like I'm a bit of a bad influence though if you, you did your 1K reps too fast because of me and then 
<laughs> Can I blame you for the pacing as well? Because I was standing at the start line. I was like, Dom, I'm just, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to take it easy. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, well, anyway, but we, but we were at the, we're at the start of roads. And once you, cause there's like, there's heaps of people. And once they got up to speed, I was like, we've, we've got momentum now. That's it. We're, <laughs> we're in it. Um, but yeah, it was paced pretty like it was pretty pretty good. Like Nick went out. Um we went out, the splits were pretty even. Like there wasn't there wasn't even a big slowdown. So he got to like 3K. And then he was definitely in the hurt locker from from 3K, but definitely didn't like succumb to it at all. Like just pretty much put his head down and kept kept pushing. I think I was a little bit, I don't know, do you think I was too too much in the last k dom nah i think that's that's good but good. like um depends who it is some people hate that though when you're like talking too much and you're pacing them like i used to run with beck and yeah i think maybe because you got that close relationship but um yeah she didn't really want to hear words of encouragement from me about her running um, <laughs> when she's in that kind of mental state but everyone's okay. different well nick it was the last k we became like we didn't say anything pretty much to the last k and then like we we're turning around I was like, come on, Nick, come on. And I was giving him like the kilometer, then like 400 to go, and then pretty aggressive after 400. But um, yeah, nailed it. That was, that was, um, that was really good. That was, that was a, and the weather was good. So, uh, good morning for a PB. Um, and then Sunday today with Dom as well, mate, two days in a row. How good's that? Mm -hmm. We did, 20 28k um jumped in for 7k this was at the bay with um another another delta guy nick jeffrey's session did like about 7k at four minute pace and then 7k at 3 30 pace and then cool down dom you were up up front pushing pushing the pace trying to blow me up but um <laughs> had a bit of self-discipline in this instance and held back i was with chris um that felt good probably probably definitely a meaty three days after mm. like taking some downtime and stressing about hamstring so still feeling good um and i'm ready for the next week i think the next week's going to be quite significant so but one thing i would say during this week is like a, after last week after the last week and pulling up like a little bit sore and freaking out i definitely started focusing a lot more on like those little details so the previous week i was had a few nights where i was you know few few pints at dinner not getting not getting enough sleep that sort of thing so i just made i made a point to like get get to bed between 9 and 9 30 and like really get good sleep had a had a good conversation with some of the delta people just about like nutrition and stuff like that we kind of just had a chat um like they kind of were asking what i would eat in a day just like a typical day and i was like going through first i couldn't remember exactly like i couldn't remember specifically one day what i would what i would eat but i think definitely hadn't been i don't think i'd been eating enough um but it's something like when you get when i got caught up in training i didn't really think about it if that makes sense you kind of just go with the flow and sometimes like i, I would say i'd be on the side of under eating so that was another thing after the dinner i think it was on wednesday that i'm gonna gonna focus on for the for the, for the rest of the block just to stay as healthy as possible but yeah overall very happy to be back training and hopefully can just keep rolling into gold coast next next thing i have up is hocker half which is in two weeks on the 5th of may so i'm looking forward to that um yeah so are you both training for gold coast or yes yeah, yeah. And that's like the same day, I think. Is what what date's that? Twenty ninth of June. No, uh, maybe the week after, like the seventh of July. Oh, okay. yeah, cool. Yeah, but pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, seventh. Okay. Yeah, seventh. Um, yeah. What about what about you, Dom? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's pretty good week for me. Um, uh, Monday was just easy, sixteen k's. Tuesday was the session at Turbo. Um, I've been doing like a bit of a longer warm up, so it was like forty minute warm up, 
just to get a few more carries in. And then the session was, um, uh, the session I've been given was 30 minutes uh, threshold. But then because I'm leading the run at turbo, that's kind of um, a bit of a big ask to just get everyone to do a 30 minute tempo. <laughs> so kind of mixed it up a bit and said, okay, we'll do like five minutes at marathon pace and then five minutes at half marathon pace. Um, which went down pretty well. Actually, everyone really enjoyed it. And I was like, phew, like, um, yeah, I can still kind of keep my status there. Um, but yeah, I was running with a rel who I do a lot of my training with and he like just pit me on the last rep. He like kind of broke away from me and I was like, oh, I can't quite go with him, which is frustrating. And then- you got a good Wednesday, little rivalry now, don't you, though? Yeah, he's, he started keeping score, I think, um, <laughs> last week. So that was 2-0. <laughs> and then on wednesday is yeah i took a whole rest day i've been doing that similar to joe i guess like that's been my one day a week where um i just take the day off uh because i guess it comes off like sunday long run monday like it was easy but it's still 16 k's and then tuesday that ended up being a 20k run with um the session and the warm-up and the cool down so i was pretty cooked by then which is good way to kind of break up the week and then thursday was uh i did an easy half hour double as well as a session which was six by a k um with a rail again what was uh, the caption for that one on strava dom caption was got uh, after it i saw that i was like here we oh, go got this after it. spicy <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah i think i don't know i haven't done 1k reps in ages and i was kind of keen to see where i was at which was probably not again what the coach um prescribed but that's okay i think first one was 250 or like three minutes or 259 i think and then next one was uh i think it was hang on where are these splits i think josh josh backwell sent me your screenshots like have a look at this (laughs) (laughs) um Oh, this is annoying. It doesn't really show the splits on Strava. What? You're oh, a here premium we go. man now, aren't you? Or oh, no, before Yeah, me. so first one, 259. Next one, three minutes. Next one, we started going backwards, 307. Then uh, 309. Then 313. I was really struggling. And then managed to close the last one, 302. So um, blew up a little bit, but kind of held it together, which is nice. How did you recover on that last? You just went... Just we were like, let's let's go. Like last one, you got last last rep energy or something? Yeah, last rep energy. I was <laughs> okay. hungry. Um, it got like to the final 400 and I like kind of tried to put a bit of a surge in because I was like, okay, if I can at least get a rel on this rep, um, mm. I can kind of redeem myself somewhat. But no, nah, he was too good and kicked away from me. Um, 3-0. He won that session again. So that's 3-0. Three, three <laughs> <laughs> this is like then, golf. This is like you and I playing golf. I wish I could do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get him eventually. I'll get him eventually. Uh, Friday did a easy double snuck out at lunch um, for 5Ks at work. And then uh, ran again in the afternoon, did um, another 16Ks. Then we did the park run with Smitty and uh, Nick on saturday pacing nick to pb and then sunday did the long run this morning um with that uh like 7k effort in there um a little bit faster than smitty (laughs) and uh, a bit faster (laughs) i wasn't going near that you with um one of the new delta recruits um shibby 218 man all right like 218 marathon that's gnarly yeah um and then did a little double this afternoon as well. So total of 128 Ks, um, all pretty flat. But, yeah, solid week. How's the body feeling? Feeling good, yeah. I think um, I spent, like, the past two or three weeks at, like, 115 Ks, and I feel like I kind of um, got used to that mileage and it's been pretty manageable. So stepping up a little bit hasn't been too much of a stretch. Um and I think, yeah, the next couple of weeks, we'll just be trying to add on maybe five, 10 Ks a week and try and build to 150, similar to Joe, I guess, but without all the climbing um, <laughs> and hold that for a little while. And then- Much more speed back. there, sounds, that's the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was the week. It was, yeah, not too bad. 
Mm. But I guess back on topic, um, Buffalo Stampede looked like a fantastic weekend down there in Bright. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, it was pretty pretty cool. Like it was a new venue. Um, yeah, like lots of people had like over two thousand runners. Um, I don't actually know, actually, I should check, but that must be one of the biggest events in ours for trail running. Um, obviously UTA is second biggest in the world, but um yeah, I think you know, two thousand is quite a lot. Um I mean and it was a good crowd, like the, people bring you know two three people and so there seemed to be a lot of people around the venue was pretty packed on the, the friday night it's really cool because it's got the um the 20k and the 100k reg over we do also do the the 10k race starts at six so um that's just so cool like that's if you want to have a really cool finish line uh and you're in good shape and you can win it that's yeah it's cool because like there's a lot of people around um you might have i don't know if you followed the instagram over the weekend but um it was really good instagram like um, yeah yeah oh yeah we got we had madge doing the instagram um so i don't know do you know madge may, may uh, yeah yeah i think i met him when i was down there um but he's, yeah, he's-, he's just amazing at it like you know he does that for uh, like a lot of races around the world, Broken Arrow and a whole bunch of other ones. So, yeah, that was a big, big thing, getting him and um, doing a good job. It's not easy to do. I, I'm, I'd i love to find plenty of people who can do that sort of stuff, but I just don't, yeah, if you know anyone who's an Instagram genius who's, who's around all, the, all throughout the year, then then let me know. Sounds but, good. Uh, Sorry, Tom's oh, pretty nah, good. <laughs> not to that level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that was cool. Get having really good coverage. Um, but yeah, the ten k was super fun. I actually raced the ten k, um, and I was well. Well, I went out and marked the ten k the that day, and I was excited to use that as my excuse for not doing very well. Um, because it was like six hours, like hiking around, marking it. It was really really involved course marking for that 10k because it's in the mountain bike park heaps of like different trails super annoying as well because there was another mountain bike event on the same weekend and yeah. so they had marked out their courses with like this white ribbon um so like some of our course would be like you'd be running through this white ribbon and then the white ribbon would like turn you a certain way or you'd keep going but we would have to turn right and so i'm like how am i going to mark this like so we did our best and we had course marshals out there and I think only a couple of people went the wrong way. So that was good. But yeah, it took a while to mark that really well. And then um and then got back and it was like I'm you know, probably, I'm a bit cooked because we finished at like oh like an hour or two before the race, like not much time um to get ready. But um yeah, so I ran the race and it was okay. Like I halfway up the climb, Mystic, it was a bit rough. Um, and there was, yeah, I was just trying to hold on. I think I came like 15th or something. Um, but uh, problem is, I can't use it as my excuse because I marked the course the whole day with Max Taylor, who bloody won. So <laughs> um, there goes that one. <laughs> doesn't help me out at all. But uh, yeah, he, he was go- like, he was, I was, he was going on about how, you know, he's going to do like real terribly and like he's tired. And I was, I was like, I agree. Like you shouldn't be doing good tonight at all. Like you should be wrecked. Cause we didn't have much food either. I don't think like we had plenty of water, but he didn't eat much throughout the day. And I'm, I was like, you're not going to, I I thought he wasn't going to do very well. And then he just like goes and crushes everyone one by like, I don't even know. I, I got the results here. How much did he win by? Like three minutes in a 10k race wow yeah crushed it um yeah but he uh, that's um that course now the 10k goes up like mystic up the same way i yeah i've like it's just this, the standard climb like the main climb up mystic i guess up emily spur and i checked my strava that i've done it 73 times in my um strava life and uh that was what i did my threshold up this week um and yeah he ran like 
such a quick time up there in the 10k like didn't get the crown or anything but he was like pretty close and i was pretty blown away because it just of how little preparation he would have had to do well in that race um but uh yeah that was fun and then we had uh, i should mention the weather was like insanely good and that's a big big thing as well like saw some other races on same weekend and they had like t- like noosa had like terrible terrible weather like there's just mud baths everywhere so helps when it's like awesome weather um yeah we were lucky with that um but yeah the 10k super fun um i'd recommend if you like want to come down and check out the event but you don't really you're not in racing shape or whatever or you don't want to like focus on the marathon or the 100k or whatever then the 10k is a really cool cool event um and uh so that was fun but yeah like in that race tim lock actually managed to sneak in for second and mm. uh and matt dunn came third so matt dunn last guest of the show yeah fast guest <laughs> of the show um yeah tim lock he's such a like just shows up the radar yeah, yeah he's flying on the radar he's been in buffalo a lot actually i think he comes every year um him and tim and mick because hmm. they don't have athletes running and they love it and so yeah. Mix some um, coaching me at the moment as well. So, oh, really? Good the connection go. there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Cool, cool. Yeah. So they're always down. They love it. And yeah, like Tim just flies on. Like, yeah, the, the amount of podiums he gets, with, mm. and people just don't even really realize, mm. but he's just there. You know, he's a good runner. He's Whenever super- he shows up, he always runs well. Yeah. Yeah. Really good runner. Mm. And uh, mm. Monica Ludrix won it for the female. So she was um, doing the mini slam, the Oh, wow. called, it's called the Grand Buffalo Stampede Grand Slam. So the 10, 20, 42, 72K. And that event has really, really taken off. We had like 100. Um, I think we had over 100 people running like all three, like for, for that event, which is a lot. Um, and yeah, it's just been, yeah, everyone seems to be getting around that format for some reason. Um it's it's fun like you double your distance each day and i think it's achievable as well it's like it's a, it's something really hard to do but it's also like more achievable than you know say like the 100k or whatever so i think yeah people get excited about it you you do end up running 72k in in the end which is i guess you could kind of say it's almost like an ultra but it's not so but yeah um it's it's just a cool way to break it up and it's actually fun cuz the 10k 20k and the 42k they don't overlap the trails don't overlap too much at all so yeah you you get a fair bit of unique trail in there and i've seen a lot of other grand slam races where like you kind of just do the same trail each day but you add on a bit more or you do a bit less of it um so yeah that's that's a cool event she won overall the the um the 10k but also she won the the grand slam as well and that was a really strong female field so she's up from she's she was down from central coast um i hadn't heard of her before but she's friends with uh one of um the people who work for single track as well so yeah um she did really well um we had a local lady coming in second lucy clark in the 10k and she, that's a cool story or well, actually third place is also a local lady sean kennedy um and I don't know if you know Sean Kennedy or not, but she's yeah, pretty good runner. Um, she did OCC last year, um, but she's Lockie. I don't know if you know Lockie Kennedy. He's like an old, like an old school, really good trail runner. From they used to live up in the Blackheath Blue Mountains. Um, and Lockie Kennedy, yeah, he like he's won Hounslow. He's won a lot of races. Used to be an old Lasbo athlete. So yeah, that a bit of a connection there. But Lucy Clark came second and she just had a baby like last year. I reckon it was only like six months ago, something. Jeez. So maybe seven months ago. But yeah, real not that long ago. So she's gotten back into running. She lives at the base of Mystic as well. So she's done it a lot. So she knows what she's doing. Um, but yeah, they um it was cool. There's actually a lot of local ladies doing really well over the weekend um we talking about the grand slam we'll just cover that off quickly and then i've talked about monica because um oh yeah 
yeah, like a couple of local ladies did really good in that as well. So there was like four lo- like really well known, like bright locals who did the the 72k grand slam. So that was exciting, kind of. And they're all like similar level as well. So it's kind of exciting. And one of them was my wife, Vic. Um, oh. So it was actually really cool because uh yeah, there was just like all four of them randomly wanted to do it. Um Are you so, being coach to your wife? No, nah, no, nah, nah, she just does her own thing. Yeah. Okay. Just, um just gets out there. She tells me what to do. Um, <laughs> I often yeah, it's funny how often I copy her runs. Which is kind of ironic because when we met, like I lived here um, for a while and I, we, I took her out running a lot and I know the area really well, but I, I, I've gotten a bit bored of like, I don't know what to do anymore. So I'll just like go copy her around. So now she like lets me know about it all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she was doing it. Um, and then Leah Cooper and Leah Alexander were doing it to other local ladies uh leah cooper ended, ended up coming second in the grand slam um she's a really good runner and then jacinta trevina um also was doing it and she had a really cool storyline because she did the first ever buffalo stampede uh, and she won the ultra um so the ultra used to be 75k and this grand slam is like 72k and so her in her mind She's like, she's a bit like, you know, that was 10 years ago and now she's had two kids. So she's coming back from that as well. She's also a doctor, works really hard. Um, so she, her, she was like, I'm going to try and beat my winning 75K time from 10 years ago in like the Grand Slam. And unfortunately, she rolled her ankle real bad going down clear spot in 20K. But she would have, I think she would have beaten her time for sure. But, uh, She'll never know, I guess, because um, she she's a good runner. I think she did quite well in the 10K. She must have been top five or something, um, top 10, definitely. Um, but, yeah, so that was cool. Same, she rolled her ankle. And then, um, yeah, Leah, Ale- well, my wife, Vic, she came fifth in the Grand Slam. Leah Alexander, the other Leah, came fourth in the Grand Slam. So the local girls crushed it. But also Kerry um, Clayton came third, and she isn't a local, but she's very close. She lives in Albury, so, okay. um, and I I know her well, and a lot of locals know her well. So, yeah, we had a lot of local ladies crushing it out there in the Grand mm-hmm. Slam. Um, they all loved it. Uh, yeah, we the one thing, like, that is very consistent in the feedback is how much people love that that 72K back-to-back-to-back um, event. Like, everyone... Run raves about it um, because, yeah, I don't know. I've not done it. I don't know why. Maybe I should give it a go. <laughs> See, figure it out. Uh, and in the guys for that, we had a really strong field as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, Samuel Stowe won. Dan Trevina came second and Ryan Lowe came third. Um, going into it, I thought, you know, Ryan Lowe should crush it. But, yeah, it's just yeah. like a deep field. And, and even like. It looks like there's only what? six seven minutes between the top yeah three. that's yeah. crazy yeah, like yeah i mean like dan trevina is a local he's that's just into trevina's husband so she was right. the one with older ankle um and won it the first year uh dan came second in the marathon last year and he won the 10k oh no he came second in the 10k last year uh and dan's um he's just i don't know like man he can run so he's the best downhill runner you'll ever see um and he like he won shot over a marathon this year um yeah like doesn't train ever like and he's just total beast so he came second um but yeah like that was a really deep field like um you look right down to like seventh uh like yeah sixth place robbie savage he's a local guy who does really well in a lot of races. Josh Godden came seventh. He's a good young guy from Melbourne. Andrew Lennon, like you guys probably know Andrew Lennon. He's at every race. He came fifth. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, a really deep field in that um, as well. So, yeah, we do get a lot of good runners in the mm. in that multi-day event. It's, t- it's kind of shaping up to be the, the next big thing. Um, but, yeah, that was the – so that was the Friday night. The um, – 
Another notable mention from that Friday night would be the Jared Owen, who won the Grand Slam, mm. the 100K, the 152K one. Um, he just flew past me on the climb of Misty. Like, he's a really, really good runner, that guy. I think he was, like, second to the top. Um, I don't know. He mustn't be – he either mustn't be the best downhill or he was probably taking it a bit easier because he had to run – you know, 100K the next day. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good runner. He's a really good runner. Like, he, he won the Grand Slam by a long, long way. Like, he he ran the 1042 in 17 hours and 47 minutes. Wow. Um, that was three hours ahead of second place. So, yeah, and he came third. Oh, wait, what was it? Where did he come? Second, he came I think, in 100K. Third? I'm just looking for it. Uh, yeah, again, third in the 100K. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so 100K Saturday morning uh, starts 6 a.m. And then people have 28 hours to run it. So um, pretty solid. The same as UTA, like a very generous sort of cutoff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's a hard course in UTA, so it's probably not as generous. Um, but, yeah, we want to just try and encourage as many people as they, we can to you know, give 100K a go. So we thought. You know, we've got to hang around anyway for the marathon. So the cutoff is 10 a.m. Sunday morning. And then the marathon finishes start sort of flowing in from basically 10.30. So that works out well for us sort of logistically. And, um, yeah, we had uh, another really good field, especially the women in this field. The top five were all super close um, and just like – yeah, really, really fun race. Like, so the like Cecilia was basically crushing it the whole day, obviously, because she's amazing. Um, but she wasn't first to clear spot though. Um, she I'm trying to remember the name of the lady. She she's a good runner, came in first to clear spot, and then she ended up running like 20 something hours. Um, mm -hmm. had a really, really hard day in the end. Um, trying to find her name forgotten her name but yeah um yeah she's a really good runner and she just toughed it out and managed to finish but she obviously had a very unideal day out there to run like i remember when she came in i was at the finish line at like probably like 2 or 3 a.m and i was like wow you must have dug deep to get that done um so that was really cool but um yeah like the women field like they were kind of trading places uh, all day, like from second to fifth. Um, I guess I think so. Nicole Patton was coming second, I think, at uh, the at the chalet. So that's like basically thirty k to go. And she ended up running pretty strong, like to the finish line. Um, but she came fifth. Like she got passed by you know three other girls, and they were all kind of close together at the chalet. So, yeah, just a really, really good female field. Um, another way to put it is Jordan Mackey. She she won last year, um, and then this year she ran a faster time by a couple minutes, I think, and then she came fourth this year. So, yeah, that was a really good girls' field. Um, Cecilia won. She ran 3.11, 13.11, which is a pretty solid time on that course. Um Ali Carupio ran 13.41, so only half an hour behind, which is actually not that far for mm -hmm. that course. And then Kim Van Kalken ran 14.09, so another basically just under half an hour behind that. Um, but, yeah, the, the like the, yeah, the second to fifth was within an hour. Um, so, yeah, pretty pretty cool cool race to take part um and then yeah the men's was a bit different like uh Owen Davies just was winning the whole way um mm -hmm. ran with Tyler Windham for a bit who I think I mentioned in the pre-race show as like a guy that you wouldn't know um he but is gonna do well and he did um yeah he's the ex Ironman guy who oh, yeah. does big big K's big training um you know a bit of I think he still does a bit of riding and stuff. So, yeah, he's got a huge engine. And um, he actually had a – said he had a really rough day, like, 
nutrition wise. Um, didn't figure it out at all, um, but still ran like in second and came in under under twelve hours, which is a good time. Like when I came second, I ran pretty much the exact same time as him. So like he he ran pretty quick. Um, yeah, to hold on for second place with bad stomach the whole way. Like, that's pretty solid. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then third place, yeah, was Jared Owen, who ran the Grand Slam, and he was only eight, like seven minutes back from Tyler. So really, really solid closing effort because Owen was in first and Tyler was in second like the whole day. So if Jared had to run him down at the finish, that would have been pretty cool. But, um, yeah, shout out to Owen, though, like super strong run. Um, mm-hmm. Still an underrated runner, I think, which yeah. is because he's like won a lot of races now. And... Um, I think people don't realize how good that run was. Like Matt Crean ran 11.10 last year and Owen ran 11.17 this year. So, and that was Matt Crean running against Reese Edwards the entire way. So like, yeah, I just think he's a super good runner. Um, He came out and did like back-to-back 50K runs on the course back in February, I think, and just crushed it. I'm like, yeah, he's going to do well. So yeah, um, really good. Any- proper professional kind of, kind of takes it very serious. What was that? Oh, I just uh, did the girls run any course records or thirteen eleven? Yeah, well, I'm just thinking about Lou Clifton's the time. I'm pretty sure she ran thirteen 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 thirty, um, but I, maybe I should look that up. We don't officially say course record mm. because um the course slightly changed mm. last year um and yeah it probably doesn't matter like we probably could say course record but yeah we we didn't well not yet um but maybe down the line once we've had this same course for a few years we'll probably start mm. saying course record but especially in the say the 20k and the 42k they were like, yeah. quite different um mm. from last year so yeah i reckon maybe next year we could probably start talking like course records and stuff but um the 100k was a very similar course all three years that we've done it so mm. yeah we probably could say course record but um yeah we haven't mentioned that um so i'm just trying to find lou clifton's result so jordan won last year in like 14 and a half ish um and then the year, the first year, Lou ran fourteen oh five to win. So yeah, Cecilia was thirteen eleven. So you know, a long way, a long way ahead of that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can definitely say next year that the course record's thirteen eleven comfortably with Cecilia's time. Like even if it was a slightly quicker course, it was definitely not fifty minutes quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's that's good. Um, yeah, cool. Just like yeah, the hundred k. Everyone seemed to love it. I don't know. It's just been growing a lot, and uh, yeah, we had over two hundred runners this year, which is nice. Um, and yeah, it just feels like it's getting a lot of momentum. And I'm yeah, I want that race to be to be big and like that's the one that we can grow a lot. Like the other ones, we already get a lot of people and cap we're gonna have to start putting caps on it um like we had probably top of my head we would have had like 500 ish starters in the marathon and maybe 600 in the 20k so yeah like we can't have too much more than that until you get to point of you know just run it like not as fun you know how like if you're in the body of the field and you're just waiting for people like there's no point so um but the 100k yeah like we could have Theoretically, we could have 500 people in that race. So mm. that's got unlimited potential. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a good course. Um, everyone seems to love it. Um, and, yeah, we had good coverage of it this year, so it was it was cool. should definitely mention the team relay as well. Um, probably won't mention all of the teams. But, um, yeah, the first female team was it's not about the running. And so they run 1240. So it's cool that you can kind of think about it like they can still run with like you know the the front male runners you know it's i think it's a cool experience you think about like um i i often think about you know like 
Jordan Orb running down Michael Dunstan in GPT and Myla last year. Like she could pass. She passed like Matt Crean, uh, Michael Dunstan in a while. It's like you're racing like pretty good runners that you'd normally not get to run against. So that's the cool thing about Team Relay. Like you can run next to some of your f- faster faster runners and stuff. But um, uh, the mixed team was actually Her Trails. So you guys probably know Her Trails. Um, mm, yep. Sam Gash's crew. Um, they had three girls and then Dev Brown filled in for one of their runners. So that turned out to be a mixed team. 12, 19, pretty solid. And then actually the, the overall men's team ran super quick. Um, they ran an hour quicker than Vipers. So the Vipers run club came second. And then, yeah, there was a couple, actually a couple of good, um, men team teams, but yeah, the team that absolutely crushed everyone was the Budai trail running trail mm-hmm. runners um couple well-known names in that team like zach Bissett, and then they had um jason stafford grant brisbane and dominic perry so yeah like all good runners they trained together up on the central coast so yeah, under 10 hours that's pretty fast pretty fun but a cool way to do it um i think for sure um that was the saturday 100k which you guys will both be doing next year, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know what? Next year I'm thinking uh-huh. about doing Gold Coast. Well, I was going to do it this year, but then I got into Western. And then next year I'm like, maybe I should do Gold Coast. I just want to go on a holiday to Byron Bay, basically. <laughs> um, so we can swap. You can do right, you can do 100k next year, and I'll do the Gold Coast marathon. <laughs> um also on the saturday is our 20k which is our biggest race in terms of numbers um uh usually it changes every year but you know it's usually one of the most competitive races as well um so yeah we had kate avery winning again back-to-back wins for the girls uh i saw her running down the first downhill technical downhill um was out there checking some i don't even know what i was doing oh, i was dropping off max taylor he was going to do some course clearing um got to check out the front of the field and she had like rolled her ankle and was worried she wasn't going to do well she was moving okay and then like a minute or two later sj miller comes like bombing down the hill and i'm like this is going to be sj's day but yeah kate avery she held on she's an absolute Beast, very good climber. Um, Kate's got like a proper road track background. You know, she came fourth at the Commonwealth Games in the 10K, so she knows how to run. <laughs> got beaten by three Kenyans. So, um, yeah, she can climb really good. So she must have got to the bottom of that downhill. I think she's from Charlie or someone told me that she had like less than a minute lead at the bottom. Uh she must have just put a bit of time in that climb up middle track, um, second big climb of the day, and then held on because, um, yeah, it was less than two. It was like a minute, a minute and a half lead at the finish line to SJ Miller, who SJ um, is just becoming my favorite runner. She's just such a gutsy kind of runner. Um, yeah, she just – last year she won the marathon. She beat um, – uh man i'm gonna forget her name now i um what was her name she does really well in all the she's what one um uta 50 uh i can't remember her name now anyways she beat her last year um yeah she just is clutch runner she races really hard super fast um just like doesn't give up, never say die kind of attitude. Um, really good downhiller. Um, she's also a mom of like three kids. So, yeah, she she crushes it. Um, and then, yeah, who – Jillian Turnbull was in um, third. And I, I, I don't know much about her. But, um, yeah, solid field and come third place in the 20K saying something. So she must be a good runner. Uh, and then in the men, um, yeah, Mikey just crushed it. 
Mikey Demiatis. Um, don't know if you know him, but mm, he's, he's um, kind of blown up the last couple of years. Yeah, he really is actually. Yeah, he's yeah, he's just a, yeah, super good runner. Really talented. So, like he's got podiums at UTA hundred and other races. Um, yeah, he's just. I think he's still probably a little bit finding like some good results, but he's. I think he's better than his results. Like mm. him and Charlie train a lot together. I think he's just as good as Charlie. So. Charlie Hamilton and um yeah he'll he'll just start crushing it like he ran 142 in that 20k it's like one by over six minutes in a 20k which is an enormous win um and he actually ran a quicker time up that first climb than Max did the night before really man. so yeah and in a 20k like you can't go too hard. yeah you, yeah in an hour and 42 effort you know that's almost getting up there with like a road marathon effort um so yeah he's just a gun he's really strong strong legs and um he basically just won from the gun tom driscoll came second i think he lives in canberra too and yeah mikey knows him quite well and then owen williams um who i know from just a couple other races he's a good guy um yeah, he came sixth or something last year. So he, he's moving up and, uh, yeah, he ran a solid race from start to finish. So that was cool. But, yeah, the 20K is a yeah popular one. I think it's a good distance where you feel like you've raced far enough, but you're probably not fully wrecked or commit, like don't have to commit too hard to it. So Yeah, still pretty big effort though. Like, um... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just definitely our best selling option in our races is always that 20k sort of distance. Um, yeah, it must just be people's favorite. I guess the 10k is almost like, I don't know, maybe just not far enough for people. You'd think 10k would be the popular one, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, we had the marathon on Sunday, which was the race that you guys were supposed to do, but you didn't show up. <laughs> we're waiting for the start. <laughs> You were waiting there, were you? Yeah, we didn't start. Um, <laughs> Where's Tom? Where's Smitty? Where's Where's Where's, well, you know where I'm going to be. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I actually, I had to do the night shift for the 100K. So, like, basically stay out, make sure no one was off course or whatever. And so I was a bit spaced out come Sunday and I didn't, yeah, soak it all in good enough. But, um. Yeah, and I actually feel like I didn't get out on course enough because the only time I got out on course was that time to drop off Max to do the, like when I saw Kate Avery, it was the only time I got out on course. So although all the rest of the time I was like uh, either trying to relax at home and rest or like I was at the event village. So I feel like I missed out a little bit there. But um, yeah, the marathon starts 7 a.m. Sunday morning, um, runs from... Yeah, the chalet up in Mount Buffalo to Bright. Um, kind of follow. Well, it doesn't really. The the last thirty two k of the marathon follows the hundred hundred k course back to Bright. Um, and the first ten k of it sort of does its own thing up around the top. Um, and yeah, we had pretty pretty exciting race. Um, Anna McKenna, who's a massive name like worldwide now um in the trail running scene anyways she uh, just come up um black canyon was it yeah she came up black canyon she's actually racing canyons 100k next weekend as well so um races a lot but she's trying to get a golden ticket to western um like she's that good that she can get a golden ticket to western if she nails it um mm-hmm. yeah so she was just expected to crush everyone and she did, but she didn't really crush Georgina Campbell who came second. Uh, only like basically six and a half minutes behind. And, and it was so cool because she lives like right there. That's like, that's her bad. Really? Uh, at the back of our, yeah, like our house property is kind of like two, two houses. And they, Blake and Blake Hose and Georgina Campbell live at the back. Um, yeah, she's just a really, really good up and coming runner. Um, started running 
probably only two or three years ago. She did the marathon the last three years. Um, first time she did it, she wasn't really a runner. She just signed up night before and just did it. And then last year she trained pretty good um, for it and improved her time by like an hour or more probably. And then this year she's improved it by like another over an hour. Um, so she's getting pretty good. But, yeah, she she's just super strong. Like, oh, she's a ex-professional dancer. So um, you can imagine the amount of strength and, like, like all the stuff that we hate doing, like poor and <laughs> Pilates and all that, she would just be incredible at it all so she's still an instructor in bright pilates and yoga instructor um yeah so she's got just heaps of like strength and endurance from from those days now she's just transferring onto the trails and yeah she was basically running with anna mckenna a lot of the way um so that's pretty exciting um see how she can go she she's been picked now for the world champs side in the Pyrenees in September. So hopefully she does good there. Um, but yeah, pretty cool to see a friend in a local doing so good, um, which was fun. And then Jasmine Vola, Volma came third, but yeah, another good result there. I think she was pretty stoked with that. Um, she mentioned to me like she, yeah, didn't expect that. So that's cool. Um, to come third in, you know, big race. Um, and then in the man, yeah, you, don't, you probably heard there was like a bit of controversy. Did you? Yeah, a bit of drama. A bit of drama. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a shame. I won't go into too much detail about it because mm. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or anything. But, <laughs> but yeah, essentially the first five guys um, were took – actually, Dom, do you know what happened? Yeah, yeah, they all um... – Took a wrong turn. Yeah, but do you know where? At the bottom of Clear Spot, surely not. Um, no, where um, you? Oh, like off onto that hundred k course there. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, right. Yeah, you, that's it. Was the dumb bullock corner? <laughs> I was the only one to do it when I did it. Yeah, I was leading. Well, no, nah, yeah. Well, the it's it's kind of why I'm just like so just like yeah, it was really annoying. Um because there was meant to be like this year, like when we did it with you, we marked both of them like marathon this way, hundred K that way. Mm. And you just fair enough. You saw the arrow and you turn left, but there was, yeah, also an arrow to turn right or whatever. Um, but this year was like, I'm just going to mark the hundred K super clear. And then we're going to clear it. Right. Problem was they didn't, we didn't. Yeah. Basically we didn't feel that course marshal role. The 100K markings didn't get cleared. Well, they did eventually, but, yeah, we were scrambling around to, forget, to get someone there, and then there was a bunch of errors, and then basically everything went wrong, and they got there a couple of minutes too late, which was all right because in the end, like, five people went the wrong way, and they got there in time for the for 500 other people to, to go the right way. So that was, it was a, in the end, like, yeah, it could have been a big mistake, but yeah, mm. five, it's probably not the end of the world. Um, and uh, it turned out that it was a cool story because Charlie, despite losing, I mean, he said he lost 10 minutes. It would have been probably more than that, I reckon. I, I think the split was 12 minutes at the chalet that he was behind um, Mike Carroll, but theoretically Charlie would have been, a couple minutes in front of Mike Carroll at the chalet if he was on course. So I reckon, you know, he would have lost 15 minutes from the wrong turn and he still kept pushing, tried to run everyone down um, and basically did run everyone down except for Billy Curtis. So he came second. Um, Billy won. Billy got his first real big win, I guess, uh, which is really cool for him. Because uh, he's got a lot of seconds and thirds um, at a lot of big races. So, yeah, to take that win, he was stoked. Everyone was stoked for him. Um, ran a really good time, three, three and a half hours. So, yeah, that was that was cool. He was one of the big favorites going into it. Um, mm -hmm. So to take it out. No, that, that was another thing about the depth of the field. You know, we had five really good runners off course, but we still had 
like an insanely good top 10, even though, you know, basically four of them kind of gave up. Although, shout out to Jack as well. He went the wrong way and did actually finish as well. I think he came in like in the 20s or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, cool to see Charlie just have the day of his life out there, bury himself, come just run through the whole field, run through a lot of class runners as well. Um, and then Mike Carroll, who won last year, came came third this year. So yeah, um, pretty exciting race, to be honest. Um, would have been cool to get like more around the race. I was sort of just like super tired by the time they started finishing and then just went home to have a sleep. So yes. <laughs> didn't soak it up as much as I should have, but um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun week fun fun race to watch and uh it's gonna be bigger and better next year i'm sure but yeah we um that was that was all the races there was the kids race as well and the 5k um which we just try and get as many as many people around that as we can like i think we had 150 in the 5k and yeah like 100 kids or something like that showed up so that was a bit of fun. Uh, my son did it, even though he's only twenty months old. Really, <laughs> um, he was extremely slow, but he he got it done. So that was fun. But uh, yeah, no, it was cool. It was a good weekend. Yeah, awesome. Um, uh, plenty of fun as well. Like, yeah, obviously, most things were good. Got a lot of really really good feedback. But yeah, we'll always try and make it better as well. And improve for the race for next year but yeah the bones will be the same and the courses hopefully fingers crossed yeah should be the same the courses will have always changed for a reason although i don't think this year there should be any reason like it kind of depends a little bit on mystic mountain bike park um and the pines obviously running around bright a lot of it is um owned by h3p the pine plantation and so if they're if they're like fell in a group of like one of the on course areas, then yeah, we'll have to root around that. But um, hopefully we're all good. Yeah. Hopefully we can keep all the same courses for next year. And in general, I think we should be able to keep them very close to it as they are. So that'd be good. Get some records going for dumb to smash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just Down. wave. I'll just be good. I don't <laughs> be the crew. <laughs> yeah, true. No, that's, you, oh, that's what you should do. You should do the 10K and then do the, be the crew. True. Because if you get the win at the 10K, you get the biggest cheer of the whole weekend. Everyone's just like, I don't know. around, loving life. Do you trust me to crew, Dom? <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah if you run the 10K. Oh, you, can only, you can only crew if you run the 10K, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um how was the how was night shift um yeah it was uh, it's never as long as as you think like the night goes so quick when you're awake um i feel like definitely easier than gpt um which was like yeah kind of like more involved because they have well, everyone has trackers at gpt so which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because you can, this means you've got more to do. Like you can just constantly be knowing where everyone is. So, um, but yeah, the night shift, it's more of just sort of standing around the finish line waiting for people to finish. Um, yeah, there might be a couple problems here and there come up, but most of the time they, or almost all the time, it's just a chip problem. Like someone didn't show up in an aid station, but they really did sort of thing. Um, but yeah, like a couple couple things to sort out, but um, yeah, most of it's just kind of waiting for people to finish and everyone, some people come in and are smiling and great, but most people come in and are just hating life and want to get home or like some people just like go straight to their car and go home. Like they don't even <laughs> so let them. You're like, oh, well, that, <laughs> they probably mean, had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I should mention the girl who, who. Well, we only had two female finishers of the um, the 152k Grand Slam. Um, so girls, you got to get out there and do the 152k Grand Slam. 
next year. But the Li- Li- Lila Lee, who she came second, technically. Um, uh, yeah, she ran 20. No, how much was it overall? 34 hours overall for the three events added up. But she finished the 100K in 23 hours. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 23 hours, which gave her like uh, two hours. So, yeah, she finished at 5 a.m. in the morning, gave her two hours to get to the start line for the 7 a.m. start at the chalet, which is like an hour drive. Jeez. So, yeah, she came in. She was like super composed and like just walked straight to her car and her crew were there. And it was almost like it was an aid station at the finish line. She was just like, yeah, she like, <laughs> just like dialed in, just like. Walk straight to her car. I don't know what she did for the two hours in between finishing and starting the marathon, but she got it done and she finished the marathon pretty strong. So Jeez. that's uh, another level. I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, that event sounds pretty cooked. Like, yeah, to back up a marathon after 100K is like, well, yeah, it's pretty rough. I know. I think it's hard. It's, I wonder if it's harder than a miler or not. Like, it's I think it would be miler, but you got to, it's a forced break. You know, mm, I think you keep on running. You got to like stop, recover, get really sore, and then start running again. Yeah, but you've got like all the excitement of finishing as well. Yeah, and like a natural kind of down, and you just yeah, like, exactly. stuff this like yeah I yeah. I mean, I did the old Grand Slam when it was seventy five k. So it was like back then it was like a twenty seventy five forty two. And yeah, I was fully wrecked. That was like probably still one of the hardest races I've done. And I've done some hard ones. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It may, having a 100K should theoretically make it even harder. But um, yeah, people do it and they get it done. So. Mm. And um, who was it? Rosemary uh, Catton? Who- yeah, Rosemary Catton. Nice. She, she won. So they, yeah, they were like not too far apart. Yeah, like the 10K, they were pretty close. And then actually, yeah, Lila L- 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 won, beat her in the 10K. And then yeah, she wasn't too far ahead in the 100K. So, and then on the marathon, they were pretty much together. So it was it was actually a pretty close race between the two of them. Mm. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to that 100K, surely. Like, mm. I wonder what the tactics are like in the Grand Slams. Yeah. What are people this year, especially because the both of the fields are so close in the 72k one that yeah, it would have been cool to be a part of because tactically, mm. like I think Samuel Stowe was I think he was third or fourth going into the marathon and then he won. So yeah, I think it, it does come down to that longest leg. Because mm. like you can have a bad race in the 10k and you're probably only going to be 10 minutes back. But if you have a bad race in the marathon, you could be like, you know, half an hour back easy. So, yeah, I think it comes down to that the longest race in the, in the, in the whatever it is. Yeah, the Grand Slam. Mm. But yeah, that would be cool to try and problem solve the quickest way of doing it one year. Whether it's like just chilling the 10K and racing the 20K and then marathon hard, or maybe it's just going hard the whole time. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Well, it looks like that Jared Owen, he um, yeah. smashed the 10K pretty hard. Yeah. yeah, he smashed the 10K, smashed the 100K, and smashed the marathon, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the way year I did the Grand Slam, I remember talking to Christian Warren, who's like a Grand Slam veteran. I was running with him on the first day, and like in the start of the 20K, and he's like, no, nah, man, you just go hard every day. Go as hard as you can every day. And I, because that, <laughs> that wasn't like my plan. Time. That wasn't my plan at all. And then instantly my plan changed. I'm like, all right, I'm going hard every day. And then I was like, tried to crush the 20K and I absolutely ruined myself for the, yeah, the 20K, I ruined myself. And then like, it was just hard after that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go hard every day. I don't know mm-hmm. what the perspective is, but, um, I guess like the 72K, you do what a, a 10K. Is it a 10, 20, and then? 20, 40, yeah. 10, okay, so that's not too bad because you're kind of going. Yeah. 
I love that uh, actually. That is pretty hard. Still, <laughs> I reckon you. I reckon you try and win the ten k, because it's only ten k. Like, how hard could it be? Mm. You just go super hard, race crazy hard. Twenty k, you back off, and then the marathon, you just race as hard as you can. Mm-hmm. So that's how um, Dan. Tr- oh no, who did it that way? Matt Crean did it that way when he did the Grand Slam, and he did really well. He yeah. like won the ten k. He came like eighth in the 20k which was still a decent time like not too far back and then he like came second in the marathon so maybe that is the way to do it mm-hmm. interesting anyway you guys will figure it out next year <laughs> <laughs> i think <laughs> dom, have to you do like the team grand slam right so dom you could do the 10 42 and luke you could do the 20 so you like swap <laughs> oh yeah is that a thing no nah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could just like do it anyway <laughs> make it a thing yeah <laughs> or you should both just do the grand slam just, yeah we should just both do it i was gonna Don't say at least me. we'll win that other event which one it's, <laughs> it's just us yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the team grand slam you know, go around telling everyone that you won <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing <laughs> it's not <laughs> Oh, so good. But yeah, that was good. Good fun weekend. Um, if anybody didn't catch it, check out the Instagram reels and there's plenty of story highlights. Um, we are going to have a long form video come out hopefully within the next couple of weeks um, on YouTube. So yeah, we had a lot of cameras and people working over the weekend. So you can relive it if you want to from on our socials. Um, but yeah, I had really, really big reach this year, like crazy, crazy big reach on Instagram. So hopefully that just means even bigger, bigger event next year. So that's the goal. Get mm-hmm. to Bright 2025. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah. And, um, any other single track events coming up? Yeah. Got the three other ones at the end of the year. So it's kind of like stampedes for six months and then. We've got uh, September, October, November. We've got one event, each, one event each. Uh, we've got a huge, huge signing for the Hounslow Marathon. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, Dominic Bullock. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> There's whispers we're going to have a certain event up there as well, Dom. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to oh, push him for it. Um, it's, What's that? What's that? Uh, I've got my bucks coming up and, um, cool. yeah, I'm pretty keen on getting everyone up there. I went to... Oh yeah, Blackheath for a bucks last year, or it's two years ago, uh, maybe last year. Yeah, I think it was last year. So yeah, that was good, good spot for it. Um, but yeah, I love the Blue Mountains. I just love the Blue Mountains. They're so good. Oh man, the best. I love Blackheath. Awesome spot. I love Hounslow. It's just the best race. Like, I just love All View, like the the venue that it's at, and. Yeah, I could sit there for hours and just watch the view. So I don't even care about the race. It's just so beautiful. Um, no, nah, we've got we've actually got three hundred and something runners over all the event over the two events. Three hundred and fifty runners already. Wow! So we're actually probably going to sell that out. Just to let everyone know who whoever's listening. I think that might sell out Hounslow this year because we've got caps there in place. Um, yeah, last year like we've almost got like close to. Yeah, I got a lot more than last year. Not not double, but like we've got a lot more already. So um yeah, that'll be fun. Um really hard seven well no, the seventeen K is not too hard, but it's just a good seventeen K race and then the marathon's super hard. So um if anybody wants an intro to mountain running, come run the seventeen K marathon is for like people who are a bit crazy but don't want to run a marathon PR. Um, I wouldn't be trying to get you Gold Coast PR at Hounslow. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should be really good fields there as well, just quietly. But not not like not too many actually locked in entered, but we've got some pretty pretty good fields on the cards for Hounslow. Um, and then yeah, roller coaster in Melbourne that'll be October. That's more like really trying to pitch that as like our intro to trail running sort of race. Um, got the kids race uh 12k 
23k 46k which the 46k is the perfect first ultra i think like such a good course for somebody trying to get into ultras um achievable good good cutoff but also like still heaps of climbing like still like 2000 2000 like 300 or 400 meters of climbing so it's still hard but like like a good challenge but also i think like a good first race in the ultra scene um awesome forest down there in the dandenong ranges as well beautiful spot and then got gpt in november second running of it so that'll be fun yeah and the grampians which is our big miler um run the entire length of the grampians on one ribbon of dirt how good's that run along the ridge tops follow the spine of the mountains probably the best trail in the world so good so good can't believe how good it is so i I probably won't pitch you guys a mile just yet but maybe <laughs> next year next year when you've done the hard day I'll, I'll tell you. but uh yeah that's kind of like our ultra like kind of like i don't know our premier ultra event where it's like every race is 50, like over 50k or more like yeah i do the 50k stage race for the 100 mile and there's the team races so yeah, it's there's no introductory race. It's kind of like our exhibition, I guess, event. You guess, guess you could say. Um, and yeah, it's just awesome. Like, if you're a super hard nut who loves mountain adventures, then come do the miler. But the stage race is also really fun. Break it up over four days, and that's yeah, that's also going to grow into a really popular event, similar to the Grand Slam, I think um yeah where people just love that kind of three four days back to back um just keep going see how far you can go yeah but that's how all of our events all four so that's the goal and then yeah i mean work will already start for buffalo next year as well it's because it's a big event it takes lots of effort <laughs> yeah no it sounds like i'm um, all pretty kind of unique um, mm. special events um they're all awesome locations every one of them like in fact i often think like that they're probably my four favorite places in australia like like dan and ongs in melbourne if you haven't been there it's very like katoomba vibes in terms of like the just like eclectic buildings and like um like the the forest itself is super lush like fern like heaps of ferns and like the trails are very like smooth like it's not technical it's just nice running um like perfect long run kind of trails um so like fast but also like very undulating like the the climbing adds up more than you realize um and then yeah grampians just insane so pretty like super rocky world class rock, rock climbing destination um you know all of our courses run under the type not oh, taipan wall like one of the most famous rock walls in the world um and then yeah i just love blackheath and bright i think blackheath and bright are like the two my two favorite like in terms of trails from the town just such good trails from the town um yeah i mean i live in bright so i'm a bit biased but i think bright's bright's probably my favorite uh, out of all <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool like running down into the valley to finish um yeah yeah there's, there's a bit of a vibe to that yeah it is different to the blue mountains certainly where you run up to like the towns are all at the top but in mm. yeah in bright the old towns are at the bottom and yeah it's just a good town like check out strava heat maps of bright like you'd be hard pressed to find a better town than that so many options so many options um so yeah there's just like you could never get bored running here it's a good place to live um lots of lots of runners around for a small population there's a ton of runners around so that's a good reflection on the quality of the trails around here <laughs> yeah well um thanks so much for coming on mate um yeah no worries and, thanks for having me again yeah it's been a blast um been a blast looking forward to Hounslow and sounds yeah. like an incredible uh buffalo stampede that's just gone by yeah yeah it was good are you coming to hounslow luke <laughs> um 
You got a crew. Come on, you got a. <laughs> I can show you think, up to 17k maybe. You don't have to uh, run. You just need to be there. You just need to have fun. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I will I will aim to be definitely. Oh nice. That's good. Yes. Yeah. And you got now it's on record, so Dom will play it back to me when I'm like, oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like that. No, but it sounds a two second clip. Yeah. I'll make it. <laughs> no, it sounds super fun. I just don't know what I'm doing running wise towards the back end of the year, but that sounds like something yeah. that would be fun to sort of mix it up, especially after Gold Coast. Um, it's just uh, I heard the word technical and uh, yeah. it scared me. <laughs> yeah, the 17K is, I mean, marathon's much more technical, um, like, but the 17K is, is it's still technical, but, like, it's a lot of stairs. Like, it's kind of like UTA, stary, you know. Like, then yeah. it's not as technical underfoot, but... Um, yeah, it's fun. I think it's it'd be fun. fun. It's just well out of the comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to. Nah, you can still do it in a pair of vapor flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Nova Blast. <laughs> yeah, Nova Blast. <laughs> now you can get the Nova Blast TR now, like the the ones with a bit more traction. Maybe that that's. The oh really? Wow. Okay. It, it, did Asics jump on board for uh, Buffalo? Yeah, yeah. Asics are all of our events now. Asics, um, oh, awesome. nice. yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, they've got like the, this TR line, which is like, I'm trying to think which shoes exactly have it. Uh, yeah. So the G, G 2012 has like a TR and so does the Nova Blast as a TR. And, and the idea is like, it's like the same shoe, but with a bit more traction on it. Mm. Um, so I'm, yeah, I wonder, I haven't actually tried the Nova Blast one. I've tried the G2000 one and it's good. Like it's basically the same shoe, just more traction. But maybe it is, it's a good option for a, like a, a road runner on the trail. Yeah. I was wearing my Nova Blast whenever I went on a little bit of trail. I love that. Yeah. Shoe. Yeah, you should so maybe it. that one sounds perfect. I think there's another one, but I don't know which one. It, I don't, it wouldn't be the Nimbus or anything. That's too soft. Oh, mm. I don't know. but yeah, I don't know. I can't remember the, the other one, but, um, but I reckon they got some good trail shoes. Like the Fuji Light is a really, really versatile trail shoe. And like, if you like the No, you like you'd probably really like the Tribuco Max um, trail shoe. That from from Asics, super cushion, like heaps of traction, um, more stable, like on the trails. So that would probably be the best shoe for you. Like a proper cushion, hmm. Max would be good. Definitely a good fresh trail shoe for a road runner. Yeah, yeah. Keen to Check get into out. like all the little because I got the learning curve of getting all the gear and yeah, well, all that sort of stuff out. Yeah, you don't need to carry like too much gear. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so, so like, yeah, you got to figure out a little bit for sure. It is a bit of a learning curve. You'll get yeah. there. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> You've already got your shoe sword now, so shoes. I got my double got handheld my bottles as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I actually. <laughs> I remember you talking about them last time. <laughs> I actually been running with. I've actually been running with bottles more in my hands lately. And maybe you were. Maybe you. Oh, well, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the handheld like specific ones. I just carry a flask in my hand. Okay. And I've actually been loving it. And the reason I do it is just to drink more because I think if it's in your hand, you drink more. Mm. Like, especially if it's like a carb drink, which you don't necessarily want to drink all the time, but like. If it's in your hand, it's just like, oh, I've got to get rid of this thing out of my hand. So you just like drink it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been doing it a lot. So maybe you influenced me. Maybe I'm learning off you. <laughs> yeah. That is very concerning. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. All right. Well, All right. I'll see you both in September, hey? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you then. Good luck yeah. at uh, Gold Coast as well. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks, mate. What, Good are luck at, uh, what are your goals for that? Do you have any goals yet? Yep. Um, sub 230, hopefully, yeah, for no. both of us. Yeah. Yeah. It, who's going to win? <laughs> Remember we said it was not going to be a competitive showdown. It's going to be <laughs> It's going to be. It's going to be a supportive, um, wholesome yeah. moment where we both do it and are not competitive. You can hold hands over the finish line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a sprint finish if we're close to each other. That's good. 
I'm happy with that. Yeah. No, that'd be so fun. Like being similar fitness probably and being yeah. able to go out with a crew of people. That'd be super cool. Yeah. What shoes are you wearing? Um I'm gonna wear the Alpha three, which yeah. I tried for the first time today. Oh really? really and good. they were good. Yeah, they were really good. Super bright. I mean, obviously performance that doesn't make a difference, but um no, it does. they <laughs> they felt in between like the the one and the two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they felt like lighter and a bit more responsive. I really enjoyed them. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. What about you, Dom? Are you gonna wear are you gonna get just, the Alpha Threes? Yeah, I don't know. Probably will. Probably will just yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, Nike yeah. they've just yeah. They got I think we spoke you, about it before, but they've yeah. They got like a, a step on everyone and then everyone got comfortable with their shoes and it's hard to kinda Yeah. You're not know. gonna get an Android phone. That's kind of the same thing. That's yeah. true, isn't it? <laughs> it's like an Android phone. I've tried on a pair of like that new 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 Balance one. That was pretty bloody. That felt yeah. like, um the the latest. You know that like all the like geometric looking ones that they've just re- released. All well, the New Balance. Mm. They're pretty pretty nice. But yeah, I haven't yeah. I haven't got a pair of super shoes. So there was that crazy um Mizuno one as well. Yeah, that looks like sick. Weird, like rocker geometry thing going on. Yeah, mm. looks cool. I'm sure there's some good ones out there. But yeah, probably. I think it's all pretty similar now. Like everyone's mm. pretty competitive with each other, so yeah, you can't go too wrong, surely. And you look at like the elites, and like more and more people are winning races in like the Asics, you know, like Paris or like even the Puma shoes and stuff like that. Puma's mm. winning all. Races now, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, could talk about shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Good to catch up again, Joe. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for coming on. Uh... (laughs) Sorry, I cut you off, Dom. (laughs) You were doing an (laughs) outro there. (laughs) What were you going to (laughs) say? Too late now. (laughs) Wasn't important. All right. Goodbye then.